Home Assistant 2025.12's beta release has just been pushed out. Here's an overview of this month's changes. As usual, it's a beta release, so not everything is guaranteed to make it in, but usually they're pretty good about it. A new feature that I'm looking forward to is the Home Assistant Labs feature. Home Assistant Labs lets you choose which experimental features that you want to enable on your Home Assistant instance. Now, these are different from beta releases, in that the beta release is a preview of features that are being pushed out to everyone. Labs features, however, are features that they aren't quite ready to commit to, or maybe they just need a little more time to let it cook or refine some things, and they're looking for community feedback. So if you're an adventurous Home Assistant user or you don't mind enabling experimental features, then you can go in here and enable them to get a sneak preview of what's coming down the pipe later on. Now these features will likely be features that are rolled out to everyone eventually and usually have most of the bugs worked out. They're optional, so no worries if you don't want to enable them, but they're there if you want to enable them and experiment with new stuff. It'll automatically back things up if you enable a feature, so there's no worries if it ends up breaking, you can always just restore to the latest backup. So there's one that you can quickly test if you want. It will enable snowfall to appear to be falling from the top of the page as you go throughout Home Assistant. Yeah, let's go ahead and disable that one. Ah, there we go. But there's another very interesting labs feature in here that revamps how triggers and conditions are named. I don't think most people should apply these unless they're willing to be able to restore from a backup if something goes wrong. So if you're not really confident in tinkering with your Home Assistant instance, or you just don't really want to hassle with it, then I'd recommend leaving all of the labs features off and then just wait for them to be released into the regular Home Assistant baseline. But if you're willing to experiment and you don't mind necessarily potentially breaking something smaller, then go ahead and enable one of those features and then give it a test drive. All in all, the Home Assistant Labs update looks pretty interesting. Now, it wouldn't be a Home Assistant release without some more dashboard updates. And so 2025.12 is no exception. There's now an option in the dashboard settings to set a specific dashboard as the system-wide default dashboard for all users. Over in the dashboard settings, you can set that default for every user account in your Home Assistant instance. Now this applies to every single user account in Home Assistant, but you can also override it at each user account level by going into your user profile and then just changing the dashboard setting there in the menu. I imagine most people only have like one to two user accounts in their Home Assistant instance. Let me know in the comments if you have more and we'll see who has the most, but being able to set it at a default value, I think is useful for more complex setups. And then if someone wants to change their main dashboard to the home dashboard or to maybe like a custom dashboard they made, they could do that too. The areas that you can configure in your home dashboard can now be reordered. It would do it alphabetically, but having a room called like attic or awning doesn't really make sense to have that in front of the living room or the patio. This allows you to rearrange different rooms and floors depending on how your home is physically set up instead of just relying on the automatic naming that the dashboard would give you. Home dashboard also has a sidebar that has some quick links which Home Assistant thinks you'll be most likely to use. You can see that over there on the right hand side of the home dashboard. The areas dashboard has basically been merged in with the home dashboard at this point. That same functionality now exists in the home dashboard and so the areas dashboard has been retired. Now if you're using the energy dashboard you'll be able to see live power usage instead of just historical data. Assuming there are physical devices in place to detect the power usage, once you hook those power sensors into Home Assistant, you can see the current usage that are being pulled from all those sensors at the same time. This is pretty cool for those of you who can track that stuff, like if you have solar panels or a whole home battery, or you can track your natural gas usage with the power company. Being able to see historical data and real-time data gives you better insight into what your home uses and might help give you ideas on how to save on your power bill. There's also an update to the water usage section of the energy dashboard that shows how much water is being consumed by specific devices. Again, assuming that there are actually sensors in place that can detect your water usage for that device. This could be useful if you have like a water softener or some lawn sprinklers, or maybe something like that, which would let you see how much water the front yard is using versus the backyard. And there's also a new Sankey diagram that shows your water breakdown usage for each of those devices. And in this release, there are a few more loose odds and ends. If you remember back from, gosh, I think it was June or July, the Home Assistant deprecated the 32-bit OS release, along with the core and the supervised installation methods. As of this release, those versions and 
installation methods are completely unsupported. So if you're still one of the few people that are on those versions, you're gonna have to migrate to a newer version like on Home Assistant OS in order to get new Home Assistant features. If you use any AI services, such as with Home Assistant Voice or maybe some other custom task, the debugger now lets you see what is being sent to those AI services and that will hopefully help you debug any issues if you're wondering why things are getting missed in translation. This will hopefully give you a better view into what's being sent. And if you have Android Auto, you can actually add entities to your widgets or your favorites inside Android Auto. And so this lets you add custom options to your Android Auto screen if you ever needed something like that. So that'd be kind of cool for maybe location-based tracking. Or if you want to do something special from your car that needed to communicate with Home Assistant, now you could do it straight from the Android Auto screen. As usual, make sure you check the updated integrations of the breaking changes to see if any of those affect you. This is a video that YouTube thinks you're really going to like. So go ahead and tap or click that one to check that one out. And I'll see you in the next one.